Long ago, the Lord was speaking through the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, Go down to the potter's house. There I'm going to give you my message. So Jeremiah went down to the potter's house and he saw the potter working on the potter's wheel. And the vessel that was being shaped on the potter's wheel was marred in his hands. So Jeremiah must have thought, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. The Lord sent him to the potter's house. So he watched. He sat there and he watched and waited. He saw the potter as he removed this marred, twisted, torn piece of clay from the potter's wheel, and he fixed it. At least he fixed it. He didn't realize what the potter was doing, but the potter was repairing the clay. So the potter, with the force of his hands, churned and twisted and blended the clay to a condition where it was completely homogenous in an agreement with itself. So every potter who's ever working on the potter's wheel understands this problem. Sometimes you get a piece of clay that dried out a little bit on one side. Sometimes it didn't mix very well. It literally feels as if two pieces of clay are wrestling among themselves regarding how they're going to submit to the hands of the potter. And any clay that is divided against itself, like Yeshua, Jesus said, any nation, kingdom, or even a household that is divided against itself is not going to stand. It's true about the individual. James talks about this in chapter 1 of James 7 and 8. He talks about how a man who is doubting the Lord, even doubts the Lord's very existence. It's like a man who's a double-minded man who should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded, unstable in all that he does. In our walk with the Lord, we must strive to be homogenous, wholeheartedly surrendered to Him. We have no portions of our lives to our own leadership. See, for a piece of clay to become everything that the potter desires, it must be completely surrendered to the Lord. It must be completely surrendered to the potter. And the clay that is completely surrendered is a clay that is in agreement with itself. So as the potter hopes to shape and change and form the vessel, the vessel can, with its whole heart, say, Yes, Lord, shape me, change me, form me. One of the blessings that comes out of reading the story of Jeremiah chapter 18 is that the potter did not throw the piece of clay when it was ruined on the potter's wheel. He did not stomp off mad. He simply just removed it from the potter's wheel. He repaired what was wrong with the clay, placed it back onto the potter's wheel, and before the eyes of Jeremiah, that marred and twisted ugly shape turned into something beautiful. And then the word of the Lord, the word of Yahweh, spoke to Jeremiah and said, Can I not do with you as the potter does with the clay? For as clay is in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. Potter, he takes a material that most of us wouldn't pay a nickel for and transforms it into something of great value and worth. He takes something that has absolutely no function or no use in the earth and transforms it into something that is not just beautiful, but also has purpose and function. And that greatness that is achieved in that piece of clay will now last forever. It's a picture of what our God desires and loves to do in our lives. Regardless of what life was like for you in the clay pit, maybe he gathered you up out of the bottom of a pond somewhere or out of a, a hole dug in the middle of a field. Maybe he scooped you out of a ditch. It does not matter what life was like in the clay pit. What matters only is that you surrender. You cry out to him, I can't save myself. We as individuals, we as the church, we as a nation, if we call upon the name of the Lord, he will hear from heaven. He will forgive us of our sins and he will heal our land. He will heal our households. He will heal our towns, our cities. He will heal all of the earth if we would just only surrender and acknowledge that we cannot save ourselves and that we need him. In Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19, the Lord says, I will give them an undivided heart. I will put a new spirit inside of them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people. I will be their God. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. In this election season, we as the people of God, those who call upon the name of the Lord, whose name is Yahweh, and the Son Yeshua, Jesus, if we will humble ourselves and pray and acknowledge, we can elect a man, but it is only God who's going to save us. We have to fall upon this stone. Jesus said, He who falls on this stone will be broken, but to he on whom it falls shall be crushed. Lord, if our hearts need to be crushed, crush us. Break us, Lord. Show us that we cannot save ourselves. Our most talented, our most gifted men cannot save us. We must humble ourselves before you. Only you, O oh Lord, can save us. Forgive us of our sins and heal our land.